Hello and welcome to Human Anatomy Prep. I'm Ty Gardner and I'll be your instructor. Here's our mind map for this chapter. I won't be covering all of the muscles you'll learn in anatomy, so the mind map is pretty general. We'll begin with a look at the sarcomere, the contractile unit of skeletal muscle tissue. Then I will introduce some basic concepts that will help us understand how individual muscles work. Finally, I'll give examples of some important muscles while explaining how muscles are named. Almost time to look at a sarcomere. We just need to figure out where to find one first. A muscle is a bundle of fascicles separated by connective tissue. A fascicle is a bundle of muscle fibers. Muscle fiber means muscle cell separated by connective tissue. A muscle fiber is a bundle of myofibrils. A myofibril is a long fiber made of connected sarcomeres, the contractile units of skeletal muscle. A sarcomere consists of proteins that overlap. The area of overlap increases to produce muscle contraction. Myosin forms the thick filaments and actin serves as the main component of thin filaments. In physiology you'll learn how a myosin head binds to a site on the actin filament and moves it towards the middle of the sarcomere during a power stroke to produce a contraction. Let's take a look at some of the regions of a sarcomere so you'll be prepared to learn this sliding filament theory. Each sarcomere has a z-line at each end, where actin filaments attach and where sarcomeres meet. The m-line is located in the middle of the sarcomere, where the myosin filaments attach. The i-bands are regions at both ends, where we find only thin, actin, filaments. The a-band is the region of overlapping thick, myosin, and thin, actin, filaments. The H zone is the region of the A band that has only thick myosin filaments. The names are helpful. The lines can be remembered as Z at the ends, like in the alphabet, M for middle. I is a skinny letter, the I band has only thin filaments. H is a wider letter, the H band has only thick filaments. A is skinny up top and wide at the bottom. The A band contains both thick and thin filaments. Ultimately, contraction is about increasing overlap, the A band, while decreasing the I band and H zone. Muscle contraction requires the shortening of a lot of sarcomeres in a lot of myofibrils of a lot of muscle fibers. Now let's talk about whole muscles. If we know what a muscle attaches to, we can predict what it will do. We'll focus on muscles that attach bone to bone, but some, like many facial muscles, can attach to skin. This is the biceps brachii muscle. We'll use it to look at attachment sites and to discuss muscle movement. An origin is the, generally, stable attachment site of a muscle. The biceps brachii has two. Origins on limbs tend to be proximal. On the torso they tend to be medial. For example, spinous processes of vertebrae. The biceps brachii originates on the supraglenoid tubercle and coracoid process, both on the scapula. An insertion is the movable attachment site of a muscle. The biceps brachii inserts on the radial tuberosity. Insertions on limbs tend to be distal. Insertions on the torso may be superior, inferior, or lateral. An action is what a muscle does. It is determined by the direction of muscle fibers and the nature of the joint. The primary action of the biceps brachii is flexion of the antebrachium at the elbow. As the biceps contracts, the radial tuberosity is pulled towards the scapula, 
the arm bending at the elbow. Because the bicep inserts on the radius, and the radius can rotate, the biceps also supinates the antebrachium. Muscle names tend to tell us something useful. The question is, what is each name telling us? The trapezius muscle tells us that it is shaped like a trapezoid or diamond. The trapezius originates on the external occipital protuberance of the skull and the spinous processes of the first cervical to the twelfth thoracic vertebrae. It inserts on the spine and acromion process of the scapula, as well as the lateral end of the clavicle. Its action is complicated. It can elevate or depress the scapula depending on the fibers used. Its main jobs are probably the retraction of the scapula and stabilizing the scapula while we use the humerus. The sternocleidomastoid muscle tells us where it attaches. It originates on the manubrium of the sternum, sterno, and the medial clavicle, clido. It inserts on the mastoid process of the temporal bone, mastoid. Using one muscle, the mastoid process is pulled towards the sternum and the head rotates to the opposite side. So contracting the left sternocleidomastoid rotates the head to the right. Using both muscles, the head and neck are flexed, bringing the chin towards the sternum. The pectoralis major muscle tells us that it is located in the pectoral, anterior chest, region. The pectoralis major muscle originates on the sternum and medial clavicle, as well as some ribs. It inserts on the crest of the greater tubercle of the humerus. Its primary action is to adduct the humerus, pulling the arm back towards the midline of the body. The major in pectoralis major tells us that there is another muscle there, the pectoralis minor, deep. The pronator teres muscle tells us that it pronates the antebrachium. Teres equals round. It originates on the medial epicondyle of the humerus and inserts on the diaphysis of the radius. The pronator on the distal end of the antebrachium is called the pronator quadratus for its square shape. The gluteus maximus muscle tells us that it is large relative to other muscles in the gluteal region, the butt. There are three gluteal muscles, the gluteus maximus, the gluteus medius, and the gluteus minimus. The gluteus maximus originates along the posterior sacrum and posterior iliac crest. It inserts on the gluteal tuberosity of the femur. Its action is to extend the femur during walking or standing up from a squat. I hope this has been helpful. Your next stop is the video on the nervous system.